but before we discuss about the relationships between the two we would also try to understand the various uh, dividend based theories that are there and we would uh, look at <coughs> the different uh, taxations that are available on the dividends and uh, how do i compute the effective tax rate based on various uh, tax systems on dividends and then we would also look at different types of dividend payout policies that are there around the world and uh, move towards uh, understanding the share repurchases how the share repurchases are more better compared to dividend or in what cases the share repurchases are better compared to dividend and vice versa and finally let's look at some metrics related to dividends and uh, share repurchases which can uh, evaluate the stability of the company so these are some of the things that we would uh, look at in this particular uh, session so let's uh, get started into this aspect so first dealing with the theories relating to the dividend so there are three key theories that we talk about one is called as the dividend irrelevance theory as propounded by modigliani and miller with these are some of the proponents even these people have made uh, exclusive or extraordinary uh, start off in the area of capital structure also wherein their focus was in case of no taxes and no transaction costs the capital structure was really irrelevant whether you maintain debt or equity it is really irrelevant similar kind of a proposition they have brought in with respect to dividend also in a world of tax no taxes and no transaction costs even the dividend theory is irrelevant whatever the dividend policy the company is making it is irrelevant as far as the investor is concerned because if there are no taxes if there are no transaction costs the investor can create home made dividend what he says by home made dividend is let's say the company has declared a dividend of 3% but the investor wants 5% as his income what he could very well do is he can sell off the remaining 2% of the shares he can sell off 2% of the shares and create an additional 2% income so or if he thinks that the company has paid 10% but he is expecting only 5 with whatever the payment the company has done extra 5 he can use that money to purchase additional shares which means So virtually he is able to create he has his own dividend by either selling off his existing shares or buying off the new shares but in reality the buying and selling of these shares will result in transaction costs and there would be a gains i mean there would be taxes that could apply on capital gains because of these two things whatever uh, the home made dividend that can be uh, created will not be possible in reality but what his proposition was that is look at it as a base in case in a world there are no transaction costs and no taxes the dividend theory is really irrelevant whatever the dividend the company is giving it's of not much of a relevance because the investor can create his or her own dividend by either selling or buying the shares so because of that there is no change in cost of capital there is no change in the stock price and even there is no change in the value of the firm so there is complete utter irrelevance 
that is coming out uh, by the dividend policy of the company but because there are taxes and transaction costs so a few more uh, theories uh, came into a uh, picture one is called as a dividend preference theory as the as the statement itself is saying there is a preference to the dividend there is some preference given to the uh, difference uh, dividend and it is also in line with one of our old proverbs a bird in hand is worth more than two in a bush it's as good as saying rather than thinking of something more uncertain future capital gains let me focus more on some cash which i am getting immediately in the form of dividend so compared to a capital gain individuals prefer dividends more as per this theory because they are expecting i mean this is a certainty dividend that they are getting whatever is the money that they are getting it's more uh, certain whereas whatever that you are going to receive in future it all depends on the future performance of the company and how the market and economy and various uh, underlying things perform which means there is a lot of uncertainty about the future but more certainty for the current so there is uh, 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 this theory is saying it's better to have the dividend uh, more now rather than pushing something for the future and whereas the third theory is tax aversion theory which is simply a uh, saying investors will react based on how they are taxed so see out of the profit the company is getting we are talking of dividends as well as retained earnings retained earnings are coming as capital gains or uh, some portion which the company is <coughs> paying is what is going as a dividend and the because it is retaining that portion may result in increase in the stock price which in a way is getting resulted as a part of the capital gain so depending on how the taxes are applicable on dividends and capital gains if the dividends are taxed more it always uh, goes with the investor that it's better to postpone my dividend so he would be preferring a very less of dividend because he wants to avoid paying tax on the dividend that he is receiving so the investor will prefer not to receive the dividend when the taxes are very very high so the tax aversion theory is simply a bringing out the fact that the dividend policy of the company should be in line with the taxation policy also so based on these three theories that are there they are simply a suggesting that higher the tax rates that are there in the country there is a low preference for the dividends and the companies uh, are, are even the individual investors prefer more and more of uh, capital retention where if, but if the dividends uh, tax on the dividend is going down the demand for immediate declarations of the dividend and large dividend payouts will typically start picking up all right now from the company's perspective how how is a change in the dividend let's say this year they have declared a dividend of dollar 10 per share <coughs> next year they wanted to declare dollar 12 and the year next they <coughs> are going to declare dollar 8 are probably in the last 3 years the companies have declared uh, uh, something uh, like this per share how is it perceived in the market in general what we observe is the dividend is generally perceived as a measure of the future potential earning of the firm so higher the dividend it's an in, it indicates that the company has performed really well and it has the potential to perform well in the future so even a small change see again this uh, this uh, uh, 
reception of uh, dividend <coughs> or the perception of the dividend is different in different countries in in a country like us even if there is a small change in the dividend the people are very skeptical about it if it is good they see that the company has performed really extraordinary if it is slightly down also they see that the company did not perform well but that is not the situation with many asian countries they don't uh, react that badly uh, for the changes in the dividend but in general also across the world what we see is if there is a dividend increase there are two things that are typically looked at one performance is good so that's where they have shared more and more dividend so which is looked at as a positive signal and on the other side there are people who look at it as the company does not have sufficient reinvestment opportunities no sufficient reinvestment opportunities so that's where they are declaring and paying dividend which is where they look at that particular declaration or increase in the dividends as a negative signal so both of them could really uh, come out as a part of increase in the dividend but what is typically observed is whenever there is a decrease in the dividend the signal generally is negative so that's where the companies don't want to overcome it because if in this year they have increased the dividend an immediate uh, pressure comes on the company to declare similar levels of dividend even in the future and if they have good opportunities for investing in the future and they are forced to pay a lesser dividend it creates a negative vibe in the investor community so that's where even if they have uh, declared very good profit and even if they have very sufficient cash flows companies don't come forward to declare heavy dividends or they don't uh, want to experiment heavy changes in dividend fearing on this particular factor right so any change in the dividend is definitely uh, going to uh, signal uh, an immediate uh, impact in the market and on the minds of the investors so companies have to be very careful while playing around with their dividend policies because there is a lot of information asymmetry we have discussed about this uh, earlier also the managers versus the shareholders the access to the information for them is completely different here the company's performance the shareholders they have invested but they are not a part of the day to day operations of the company so there is the possibility of big information asymmetry so that's where <coughs> it's better that the companies maintain a dividend which is more stable or growing more stably rather than fiddling around with it uh, uh, extraordinarily because uh, the investors react to it quite quickly and more and more uh, uh more and more fluctuations in the dividend can send different kinds of signals into the market right so that is where we generally uh, look at two major uh, dimensions that are impacting the dividend payout one if i look at it from client's perspective different clients have different preference for dividend why probably a very high income individual he is already in the high tax bracket so if dividend is coming to him in large volumes every year even that dividend is also taxed at a very high interest rate at a very high tax rate so he is ending up losing more so he prefers it's better not to have a dividend in this year let me have it as a capital gain and probably i'll uh, take this uh, capital gain sometime uh, later when i really convert it into a gain probably in in a year where i am not earning more let me get the benefit out of it so all these things are typically uh, looked at as capital gains and long term capital uh, and uh, uh, 